Let's take a look at example number nine. And example number nine is going to be a little bit more challenging compared to example number eight because we have a piecewise defined function. The g of x in this case has a brace next to it with two different equations written down afterwards. And they are asking if the function is continuous at negative two or not. So negative two is what I call the border value because it's the cutoff of the first graph and the beginning of the second graph. So I usually like to call this the border number. This is not the technical term for the number negative two, but it's just an easy way for us to remember that negative two is interesting because it's the place where one graph ends and one graph begins. So we have to be very careful when we're doing the limit in this case to investigate if the function is continuous or not. But let's begin with step number one. In step number one, we look for the g of the number negative two because they ask for the continuity at negative two. So what I have to do here is first know which equation to use. There are two equations. Which one am I supposed to be using for this problem? The answer is look at the condition. Which condition, the top one or the second one, allows x to be equal to the point negative 2? That only happens in the second equation. The second equation is the one where the condition says x has to be greater than or equal to the negative two. So that means I am expected to use the second equation to find the answer. So the equation is x minus one. And so we're gonna replace x with negative two to evaluate the answer. So in this case, negative two minus one is going to be at the end, negative three. So that's the first challenge in these problems. The next challenge is to do the limit. Okay, so to find the limit as x approaches the border, which is negative two on this function g of x. Now, in these particular problems, we cannot do the limit all at once. We have to separate the left limit from the right limit. So we have to do it separately. So we have to do a limit as x approaches two from the left on the function g of x. And we have to do a limit as x approaches two from the right on g of x. And why do we have to do that? Again, we have to do that because negative two is the border. And so because it is the border, we have to separate the graphs from one another. So we have to do the limits separately because we're not using the same equation to graph the left side as we are using to graph the right side. So let's begin with the first limit. It says negative two minus. So we're slightly less than negative two. Which one of these two equations allows me to be slightly smaller than negative two? Well, the first equation says x is supposed to be less than negative two. So we have to use the first equation this time around because in this case, x is supposed to be smaller than negative two. So we're gonna do limit as x approaches negative two minus and then write the one half x plus three. At this point, we do the same thing that we did before. We plug in the negative two and we evaluate the answer. So in this case, we are gonna end up with negative one plus three, which is at the end, just simply two. That's the final solution for that problem. Okay, let's take a look at the second one. The second one says we want the limit to be x approaching negative two plus. So it is slightly more than negative two. So again, which equation allows me to be more than negative two? Which equation allows the x to be more than negative two? X is allowed to be more than negative two in the second condition. So that means we have to use that second equation to find the answer of this problem. So for the second problem, the g of x is going to be using the x minus one in order to find the answer of the limit. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to put limit as x approaches negative two plus and then x minus one. And so again, this is a limit problem, so we're just gonna punch in the negative two into the x, and we end up with negative three. So on one hand, we end up with a two. On the other hand, we ended up with a negative three. So what does that mean about the original problem over here? Well, this just means, unfortunately, that the limit as x approaches negative two on the g of x does not exist. Why does it not exist? 
It doesn't exist because the left limit and the right limit were not equal. So that's kind of like what we did in section 1.1 when we were doing the tables. If the left side of the table did not match with the right side of the table, we said the limit does not exist. And that's what's going on here, except we did this problem without a table. So step number three is where we decide if the function is continuous or not. So on one hand, g of negative 2 was equal to negative 3. On the other hand, the limit as x approaches negative 2 on this function g of x did not even exist. All right, so one of them is does not exist, one of them is negative 3. Are those two equal? Unfortunately, no, they are not equal. So they are not equal because one of them is not even a number. So what do we say at this point? We say g of x is not continuous at x equal to negative 2. So let's try to illustrate what happened in this problem by making a short, small graph. So first of all, let's make the xy plane. And we are interested in about what's going on at x equal to negative 2. So this is the xy plane. And let's pretend that this is x equal to negative 2. First of all, in part 1, or step 1, we discovered that g of negative 2 is equal to negative 3. So in other terms, when x is exactly negative 2, the y is exactly negative 3. So this is the point in step 1. That's what it showed us. When x is exactly negative 2, the y is exactly negative 3. So that's great. Next, we went to step number 2. And we found that if you come from the left side, then the graph is approaching the number 2. So in other terms, let's suppose that this is the number 2 on the y-axis. If you come from the left side, your graph is going to end up somewhere over here. And obviously, we can already see that the graph is not connected, so it's not going to be continuous. So if you're coming from the left side of negative 2, the graph is going to be around positive 2 on the y-axis. So that's already a problem. But then we actually went on to find what the limit is as we approach from the other side of negative 2 from the right and we discovered that that number is negative 3 so in other terms we discovered that if you come from the right side your answer is going to be negative 3 so again it lines up with the dot that we had already so now the question is can this whole graph be graphed in one shot or do we have to lift our hand obviously we have to lift our hand we can graph the right side the black dot without lifting our hands but the left side cannot be graphed you have to remove your hand off the paper and then place it again on the other side. So unfortunately, that means that the function g of x is not continuous at the point negative 2. And that's the end of the story here.